European Union leaders have reached a hard-fought deal to make dramatic cuts to the EU's greenhouse gas emissions. After all-night talks, the member states agreed to reduce emissions by 55 percent by the end of the decade. As head of the EU presidency, German Chancellor Angela Merkel welcomed the deal, saying it had been worth staying up all night to clinch it. The new target aims to reach net zero emissions by 2050. EU Council President Charles Michel says it will make Europe the leader in the fight against climate change. Let's uh, listen in to what the German Chancellor had to say about the agreement. The Green Deal is a core project of ours. We don't just want to impose a plan, we want one that will take us into the future. And that's something the Commission will be paying close attention to as we all present our national programs soon. So the fact that we have now been able to commit ourselves just a day before the UN Climate Summit to a joint European reduction target of 55 percent by 2030, I consider that a very important result, one worth losing a night's sleep over. I don't even want to think about what would have happened if we hadn't been able to achieve such a result. Angela Merkel there. So how much of a breakthrough is this? That's a question for our EU correspondent, Georg Mattes, of course. Georg, what, uh, what else can you tell us about this climate agreement? Look, Gerhard, five years ago at the Climate, uh, climate Paris uh, Conference, when the EU pledged uh, that they would cut uh, their emissions uh, entirely, become carbon neutral, I, I remember covering that and, and how that was big news. Well, look, today is the day when the EU makes good on that promise, when they realize those ambitions uh, from back then. That is the crew, that's the, today is the day when there's really direct consequences to be expected, and that is why the French president today here uh, said there is no plan B. We now have to see this through, and uh, it'll be interesting where, uh, which things will change first. But now, really, this crucial first step has been made. But well, how did uh, the EU member states manage to convince some of the more resistant and more coal-reliant countries to agree to this deal? Well, a number of things come to mind. I think a real game changer here was, of course, that leaders uh, early on the summit yesterday agreed uh, the uh, coronavirus uh, relief fund, uh, billions of euros coming uh, uh, member states' way. And particularly um, half of that fund, um, or, or rather uh, 30 percent of that package, some 550 billion euros will be used for a green transition. And so basically, in a way, you could say uh, the European member states bought this compromise uh, from countries like Poland because they will see a lot of money coming into their industry to help them make, uh, make that transition happen. And then secondly, and, and quite crucially for countries like France or, um, or the Czech Republic, uh, there is a little bit of a loophole when you drop um, the, um, the uh, fossil fuels, uh, you can still use gas and you can use nuclear energy to do that. And for, for countries that are strong in nuclear energy, of course, that is rather helpful. Our correspondent Georg Mattes from Brussels there. Thank you, Georg. And for more background on this story, I'm now joined by Max Dilly, the director of the climate program of the World Meteorological Organization, uh, the WMO. What is your reaction to this climate uh, deal reached by the EU today? Will it make a difference at all? Well, uh, all of these um, sort of measures are, are crucial and necessary they're not going to have an immediate impact because uh, the climate that we have now is a product of the levels of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that we had 20 or 30 years ago. So there's not going to be an immediate response, but nonetheless, uh, this is exactly the kind of thing that's needed in order to try to bend the curve on the temperature. But is it realistic, though, cutting, it's quite ambitious if you look at it, cutting uh, uh, CO2 emissions by more than half in just five years. How realistic is that? Well, there have been some studies recently really driven by the COVID pandemic that um, really show that even a fraction of the stimulus packages that are already being planned um, to deal with the, the COVID situation 
would be enough to put the world on a very good track with respect to achieving the targets of the Paris Agreement. So um, we're conducting a big experiment here with the fate of the planet at stake, but uh, you know there are reasons to think that uh, these measures can work, and if they're implemented quickly enough, they would certainly make a big difference. You mentioned the, the, the Paris Agreement there. That's five years old. Uh, are these targets agreed upon there still realistic? Well, um, the global temperature this year, uh, as of October, which is the, the when we released our um, state of the climate report for 2020, already showed that the global temperature is about 1.2 degrees above pre-industrial levels. And the Paris Agreement is calling to try to limit the temperature between one and a half and two degrees above pre-industrial levels. So 1.2 is pretty close to 1.5. And uh, another um, outlook that we issued for between now and 2024 shows that there's a one in 20 chance uh, that the temperature might even briefly during that period go above 1.5 degrees. It's mm -hmm. about a one in five chance. So we're, we're getting there, unfortunately, but uh, if nothing is done, it's, it's going to <laughs> go right through mm -hmm. those targets and, and beyond. And well, the higher it gets, uh, the worse it gets. You talked about getting there. The, the United States are now expected to return to the Paris Agreement with the new uh, president. Uh, does this give you fresh hope? Well, um, you know, I think, like I said, in, the, in response to the, the situation in the European uh, Union, it's also China is making announcements now. We seem to be turning a corner. And this, regardless of your political beliefs and persuasions, <clears throat> this is something that matters to everybody. And it's something that potentially can create some political unity to try to find solutions to a, pro a global problem that everyone has a stake in. Thank you very much, Max Dilley, the director of the WMO Climate Programme. It's a pleasure.